What is up guys, how are you doing? I'll be honest, today's video is a little different. Um, I have this, it's the ZTE F866, which is by all accounts a terrible, terrible flip phone, but you shouldn't buy one of, never mind two of, but I did. Um, and that's because this was my first ever mobile phone. So let's unbox one and take apart the other. So I guess we should start with one we're unboxing. The one we're unboxing is this one. This one actually only arrived this morning. Um, I bought this on eBay as I did with the other one. Obviously neither of these are actually my first ever phone. It would be cool if I'd kept it, but clearly I haven't. Um, so we're gonna bust these bad boys open. What I do find hilarious on, on a first inspection is they both had this like, free security tape um, so free is the name of a network provider it's the number three um, as you can see there um, and they had this security tape to make sure people didn't get in and there's also this sticker on the top uh, just here that reads this mobile is permanently locked and will only work on the free network now these phones are I believe 3G compatible um, which means I may be able to use one all the paperwork I could find or all the stuff online said it was only 2G, um, but the paperwork within the box that you'll see in a moment claims it's 3G. Um, so there's only one way to find out and that's to buy a SIM card and put it in there. Uh, so I'm gonna do that. Stay tuned for that video where we see how this, how this thing works. Oh, I cannot wait. For right now though, come close to the desk, come, come here-ish roughly, so you can see here-ish while we unbox this beauty. So here's the box, but really quickly before we get into it, I just want to point out this had one touch mobile TV, and this is probably from around 2005, judging by that award, um, and then you got 3,000 free text messages just by topping up. Wow, how cra imagine that, 3,000 text messages, what would you do with all of those texts? Anyway, let's get in here. If we open this up, we get a bunch of documentation. Oh, look at all the stuff that we really wanted. Planet Free was like, so I guess for context, um, so this right here, Planet Free was their like content delivery network, I guess. Um, it was like this 3G thing where you could go in and like download music. It was kind of like a website, except it was like terrible. Um, so that's good fun. Uh, there were accessories. Um, oh, it just says to to look in the shop or go online. Oh, thank God. I thought we were going to try and sell us a case for a second there. So WePay was this thing where every time someone called for every minute, you'd get 5p. And for every text you received, you'd get 2p um, added to your credit. Which is actually, you know, interesting, I guess. That's one way to try and retain customers. Um, and then if you brought your own number, you'd get 10 pounds in credit. I just love this, like the matrixy nature of this leaflet specifically. Um, here we get all the documentation. Um, as the sticker on the front explained, this was very much locked to free exclusively. This is also one of ZTE's first phones here in the UK specifically. Um, we then get, your USIM is already inserted. That's a lie. There's no SIM card in here. That's fine. And oh my days, kill me now. Enjoy your texts or texts. Smiley face. Oh God. We then have this instruction user manual. Um, which is still sealed and you can see the goodies underneath but we'll get to those in a moment so, so here you can see the user manual which is honestly well it exists uh, GSM GPRS how to do basic operations information about the warranty I feel like the warranty is probably out of date at this point and then we have the phone itself um, so it comes with a battery obviously um, a power brick, as you'd expect. And this is the real bit, the phone itself. I do love how the phone comes in its little anti-static bag. But if we take it out, 
You can see this phone actually still has the original plastic still on. I unfold this, look at that. And there's a little one on the front as well. We slide this off, we can put the battery in. And if we do that, and then turn it around, hit the power button. Oh, look at that. This is honestly unreal. Now it's going to complain because there isn't a SIM card in here. Um, look at that front screen and this, listen to this noise as you fold and unfold it. Like it is glorious. This isn't one we're taking apart though. This one is way too new thanks to the, like, the plastics and fresh out of the box. The other one is functionally the same or at least visually the same as well. Um, however, wasn't in as nice of a condition, although it was more or less new. So let's get into that one. Even just looking at the box, you can tell this one's a bit more of a mess. It actually says damaged along with front, um, but I can guarantee you it wasn't. We get all the same documentation, um, the phone and the battery, which after this, this will mean I have two batteries. So I'll have a spare battery, which is great. But this is the one um, without the plastics, that we'll be taking apart. Uh, it's functionally identical, um, but let, let's, get, let's get into it. Let's jump in. So here it is close up. Let's grab our iFixit screwdriver that I literally just stripped the handle of, like just now out of frame. Um, and, and let's get into this phone. So with those four screws off, you should in theory just be able to take this phone and just pop the front off, or I guess the bottom off with significantly more care. Oh, hang on. I think we're, there are a couple more screws on the hair on there. God damn it. With those two screws also out at this point, it should, there we go. Oh my God, look at this. Oh my days. I didn't even get to show you my favorite parts of this phone. Let's disconnect this and I'll show you my favorite part of this phone. Now I'll be the first to admit this phone isn't particularly great. Once we've connect, disconnected those two Lego style connectors, uh, this bottom part just pops off and you're stuck with the bottom part. But look, look at this, right? So it's got a camera here you can use to take photos of the environment. And then you go, hmm, I want to take a selfie. And this spins around and look at this. It's got the first spinning camera. We have a feature of this, but for some reason I found super hilarious. Uh, even though I couldn't tell you why it's practical, is the antenna is a removable. That's what that is. It's, it's just the antenna for receiving and sending radio signals. And ZTE went completely crazy designing this thing. This is a keypad that makes this look like a multi-layered PCB, if I get it just right. But it's actually just a separate board entirely and comes off and has another one of those Lego style connectors right there. And this right here is the majority of the brains of the phone. Now, if we carefully pull back the shielding, we should be able to find out more. Um, oh, look at this. This is ancient. After taking a few moments out of frame to peel back all the shielding, we have this absolute beauty. Hilariously, the SAC on here is made by Qualcomm, which I'm not sure why that surprises me. Um, I thought maybe for a phone from 2005 it wouldn't, but clearly it does. This phone lacked power in every single sense of the word. It took a regular SIM card, but it only had 10 megabytes of built-in memory. That being said, it did claim to have 240 hours or 10 days of standby time and three and a bit hours of talk time on 3G. That swiveling camera that was mentioned earlier only took photos at 640 by 480 and videos at 220 by 176. The outside screen was a mono 96 by 64 pixel situation, whilst the inside screen, if we can get this to flip with one hand, a nailed it, was coloured but only 176 by 220. That's 141 pixels per inch. That's basically the same amount as an iPhone, isn't it? I'm not sure how well you can see it on camera due to the lighting situation, 
let me see if I can kind of get it up here. Um, but the body has these like shimmers, like it has this almost like glitter around the plastic, which makes it look a bit funky. It's very early noughties. Um, and the back, like th this whole phone being plastic didn't help with the cheap feel and not of the fact it was covered in free branding. But it was nevertheless my first ever phone. So even though this isn't a phone I'd normally put back together and make sure it works, I'm now gonna go ahead and do my best to make sure that's exactly what happens. Because this for me is a piece of history. Luckily it's all pretty intuitive. Once the shielding's all back into place, I should just be able to click those two Lego connectors. And at this point, we should be able to just screw the back on and be good to go. So let's, let's try. So at this point with everything else in place, all we have to do is screw in the antenna, grab a battery. Oh my God, I'll show you this in a second, but like behind the scenes, my table is such a mess right now. Um, where did I put the battery? I can't even see it. It's okay, I just realized that I never actually took it out of the, uh, out of the box. So I didn't lose it. It was just in a different place. Um, you can put this in, turn this around and hit the power button and just pray. Oh, look at that beauty. Now due to the lack of a SIM, as you can see, it won't let me do anything apart from call the emergency services. Uh, so I'm going to pass on that offer but like listen to this oh god so you can see here the camera is just on a hinge and it means that if you're taking a selfie you have it like that and then you can spin it around and take whoops and take a photo from behind that is honestly really really incredible your sure, spec wise it's greatly outperformed by this thing the Nokia 8110 4G, my current phone, as I am smartphoneless. However, this phone right here is the one I'll cherish forever, as it is still, and always will be, my first ever mobile phone.